In this video, we're going to talk about uh, displacement maps, how to generate them in ZBrush, and how to apply them uh, in Maya when rendering with Mental Ray. Um, so there's a number of ways to do this. Um, so we're going to start with some simple methods for creating displacement maps, and then we'll talk a little bit more in detail about how displacement maps works and some other ways to generate them. Uh, before we launch into that, of course, it's a good idea to talk about what exactly a displacement map does uh, for a model. Uh, displacement maps are grayscale images that deform the geometry and render time when rendering with mental ray. So if I lower the render view here and, and move the hypershade out of the way, you can see here is our model. And it's just a, two polygon objects that have a single shader applied to them. And the shader has a displacement map. And you can see, if I switch to the perspective view, that when I zoom in, if I select the model, you can see it's fairly low polygon um, in terms of, you know, low density in terms of the number of polygons used. Same with the bottom here, this sort of rocky part. Here's the brain coral right here. So these are low polygon models. They don't have a whole lot of detail. If I hit the six key, uh, we'll see that there are some texture maps that were generated in ZBrush that are applied to them. Uh, but generally speaking, if I look at it here in the, um, just in the perspective view, I mean, it looks, it doesn't look terribly realistic. And that's because we're missing a certain level of detail that can only come through when we're rendering with mental ray. And this level of detail is created via displacement map. So in this render right here, I have a displacement map applied to both the stony part of the coral and the brain coral itself. I've also rendered a version without a displacement map that just uses textures and a normal map for fine detail, but there's no displacement map applied to this version. So if I move back and forth, you can see the difference. The details are more exaggerated. They're a bit deeper on the displaced version. You can see up here that uh, the, the geometry definitely looks a little bit deeper. More importantly, if you look at the alpha channel, you can see on the displaced version, the geometry itself is actually being displaced. And as a result, we're getting all this fine detail here on the silhouette of the model. You can see the little divots here, and there, and there, and in here, and then along the, uh, along the side. So in the undisplaced version, it's fairly smooth. We're just really just seeing the geometry as it is. Um, because normal maps and bump maps don't actually alter the geometry. They just kind of bend the normal a little bit to make it look as if it's bumpy. Displacement maps are, are different because they actually change the geometry at render time when rendering with mental ray. Um, that's a very important distinction. So when you're contemplating using a displacement map, uh, there's a few things to consider. The first thing to consider is um, you know, since displacement maps do add to render time, you want to make sure that uh, it's a model that's actually going to be close enough to the camera to actually benefit from a displacement map. One good way to judge that is to think about the silhouette of your model and how close will be to the silhouette. So in this rendering, I would really think that it would be disappointing not to see this kind of jagged detail, especially if you have something in the background. So for a view like this, I think a displacement map works really well. If we were much farther away, if the scene was, you know, rendering from like right here, then it starts to become, you know, less efficient to actually use a displacement map because we're far away and are we really going to see that bump? Is adding a displacement map to a model that's not close to the camera worth the extra time it's going to take to actually um, render? So those are some things that you want to keep in mind. Of course, if we have a camera move and we're zooming in, then we might want to decide to use a displacement map. Um, so the, now that we've kind of established what they are, um, we're going to talk about how to create them using uh, ZBrush. Uh, because the method of creating DZ, uh, displacement maps in ZBrush is kind of complex. Um, some of the issues involved are the fact that uh, ZBrush and Autodesk are two different technologies made by two different companies. Uh, ZBrush is designed to work with a large number of different 3D applications, not just Maya, but also 3ds Max, Houdini, Moto, Cinema 4D, and so on. And a lot of these different applications have different settings for the way they um, create displacement maps. So ZBrush has been set up to try and make it uh, powerful enough and flexible enough to be able to use with all these different packages. 
In this tutorial, we're going to focus on how to set it up so that it renders correctly in Maya, and that's what we're going to be focusing on.